We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and increase profits. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our expert advice and learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Transoya County and we are meeting Joseph and his son Moses. You know, it's harvest time and we've been helping out. Yeah, Caro, I can see. Messy, messy, messy. Tony, that is expected. You know, there's a lot of work to be done. This is a big farm, over 27 acres. I know you have big ideas. We'd love to introduce them too. Okay, let's go and meet them. Let's go meet them. But I need to change fast. Joseph Dotono works this farm with his son Moses. Their farm covers 27 acres of rich Transoya farmland, the bread basket of Kenya. And here they are. Joseph! Yes, Moses! <laughs> okay. How are you busy? How are we are busy? How are you? Are you fine? These look good. Let me have a look at them. Wow. You mean oh, wow. this is where the, the tomatoes we saw come from? Mm. Yes. Wow, well done. Now, now tell us, what else are you growing in your shamba? I'm a maize farmer and tomato farmer. Ah. Uh -huh. And Moses? A tomato farmer, uh -huh. maize farmer and also beans. Like father, like son. Yeah. This is good. a good partnership. That's huh? good. So, on to you, Moses. What challenges are you facing? I would like to know the kind of fertilizer that I would use to have better yields. Two, the kind of method that I would use in, in plowing tomatoes to have better yields. Now, Joseph, yes. I'm sure you've been farming longer than your son. Yes, exactly. How can Shamba Shape Up help you? I would like to have an agricultural expert so that I, the, I can be advanced with the, the new methods used today. Uh -huh. yeah. You want to drop the old system and go into a new system. Yeah. Mm. So you want to be digital? Yeah, digital, exactly. <laughs> that is very good. That is very good. But you know what, Tony? Yes. We only have one day. So mm -hmm. we need to set out to work. Okay. Okay. See you later? Yeah, we'll yeah. call you later. Yes. Okay. We'll have this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Time to pitch the tent and get ready to work. Carol. Yes, Tony. It's not easy to manage over 27 acres, but Joseph and Moses are doing quite well. And we've got ideas that we think would help them get to the next level. Joseph is a big maize farmer, so we want to introduce him to conservation agriculture and see how it can help. And I've noticed his hard work harvesting those tomatoes, so we want to find out about getting a tractor. You know, Tony, tomato business is doing very well. And uh, our farmer harvests over 500 tons of tomatoes every year. And that's why we brought our expert from Royal Seed, so that he can talk about Rambo F1 variety. Rambo. Uh -huh. Speaking of Rambo, Caro, what do you think of my muscles? Oh my goodness, Tony, do you uh, think I really want to talk about that? No, uh, I'm sure your opinion is not going to be good, so uh -uh. I don't want to hear about it. Uh -uh. But you know what? I'm going to use my muscles and carry Joseph to the next chamber to learn about conservation agriculture. You can laugh as much as you want. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later, Caro. Later. All right. <laughs> On the way to my first expert of the day, there was some very good news. The soil test results have arrived. Before growing any crops, it's important to find out how healthy your soil is. Then you know what fertilizers you need to use and if the soil needs liming. Getting the right balance of nutrients in the soil can make the difference between getting a poor harvest and a very good harvest. And we've discovered the soils here are very low in zinc, phosphorus and potassium. So, at planting, our farmer should use a balanced NPK of 10, 28, 12. And at top dressing, urea should be applied together with a potassium-based fertilizer. Let's find our farmer and give him the news. Now, while Tony was playing Rambo, I've come to meet the real thing. No, not our expert George from Royal Seed, but the amazing tomatoes. The Rambo F1 variety. Our farmer has been growing them. So, let's go and find out all about it. Uh, George and Moses, I'm seeing very good tomatoes. They are big, they look juicy, and as far as I'm concerned, they are good. 
I would agree with you that the tomatoes look good and big. Yes. But there's room for improvement. There are one or two issues that should be corrected so that it can get even higher yields. Mm -hmm. Number one is uh, staking or crop support. If you could have supported this crop, it means your cost of production would have gone down. You'll be using less chemicals to spray because coverage is much easier. And then when you water your crop, there will be no contact between the leaves, the fruits, and the soil. Because once you have your fruits in contact with the soil, some of the fruits will be rotting. So and that is a loss to the farmer. And we want to maximize so that you get 100% out of your production. Because uh, what I'm seeing here is that he has been doing flood sort of irrigation. Mm -hmm. To improve that, you can either use maybe drip irrigation and uh, maybe farrow irrigation would be better and cheaper. So that would also improve your yields as well. Staking tomatoes makes sure the plant's leaves and its fruits are kept off the ground. This stops the fruit rotting. Rotting fruit also encourages pests and diseases. Second, avoid flood irrigation. This wastes water. Instead, put in drip irrigation pipes or a cheaper option, dig furrows alongside the crop. This way, more water reaches the crop's root system. Staking and targeted watering at the roots can boost yield by up to 50%. But even so, Moses crops are still looking very good. I wondered whether this was because of the seed variety Moses is using. Royal Seeds Rambo F1. There is a difference mm -hmm. between Rambo F1 and other varieties of tomatoes. Rambo F1 has high yields okay. as compared to other varieties. Mm -hmm. Two, it is very resistant to various diseases. Okay. Yeah. Key to diseases is bacterial wilt. That is really a problem to most of the farmers in western part of the country and even the Mount Kenya region. Okay. It's very important because it has tolerance to that particular disease mm -hmm. that is bacterial wheel. Uh, so George, how does Rambo F1 look like? Okay, we have different types of cup packaging depending on the quantity of seed that the farmer is looking for. From 5 grams, 10 grams to 25 grams. And then we also have uh, 50 grams and above is packed in tins. And then to know that uh, we have uh, some printing on the top of the tin where we have the batch number, the lot number, and date of packaging. The farmer should be keen on this because this one has a very important influence on the germination of the seed. So that is key to the farmer. So, make sure when you buy seeds, they are not past their sell by date. But I wanted to know, apart from high yield, what other advantages does Rambo F1 have? You have very good germination. That is 95 to 100%. Mm -hmm. And why do I really stress on germination? Because if you have good germination, it results in very high yields. Uh -huh. And this gives you 25 to 30 tons in an acre. The next thing that is very key is that if you look at uh, the fruit shape, it is the oval shape that the market is looking for. If you look at the skin, it's firm. Eh? And what does a farm skin translate into? That gives you tomato that has a very good shelf life. Mm. We are talking about 21 to 28 days after harvesting. What can I do to have uniform fruits to this crop? So fertilization is key. After the first harvest, you still need to do some application of uh, NPK or CN so that you get uniform clusters from the lower to the farthest truss. Uh, Moses, mm -hmm. how big is your shamba? It's two acres. This is two acres. Yeah. How much have you produced? I'm ex expecting to have 50 to 60 tons. 50 to 60 tons? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a very good yield. Uh -huh. But maybe if you could have done the improvements that I've advised you, next time you'll get higher than what you're expecting. So, when you use Rambo F1, you're not only guaranteed of having money in your pocket, but you have quality produce, and above all, you get higher yield. Joseph wants to learn some new modern farming methods. So, I'm taking him to meet Ferdinand, a farmer nearby who practices conservation agriculture, and Isaac, an expert from Calro. Let's see if they can convince Joseph about the benefits of conservation agriculture. The rains have started, so I hope this is a good sign. Isaac? Yes. We came with good luck. It's raining. It's wonderful. Okay, good. What is conservation agriculture? Uh, basic principles of uh, conservation agriculture includes uh, minimum tillage, 
soil cover and then crop rotation. Now, Ferdinand, yes. how long have you been practicing conservation agriculture? Since 2010. How has it been? It has been good. It's been good? Yes. Okay, now, which three principles have you used in your chamber? There is crop rotation. Yes. Uh, rest to cover. And then there is minimum disturbance of the soil. Shall we go have a look? Yes. yes. Okay, let's go. Yes. The first of the three main principles of conservation agriculture is minimum tillage. Ferdinand is taking us to a field where he has planted maize. Now Isaac, yeah. what exactly is going on here? Here we are showing uh, minimum tillage whereby this farm was sprayed with a herbicide and then after two or three days he came with the maize seed. The maize has germinated and is doing well. Minimum tillage means avoiding plowing or using the jembe over the whole field. Instead, small holes are made only where the crop is to be planted. Use a herbicide to control weeds. Keeping the soil intact keeps it healthy and saves time. How long do you take to do this job? With the spray, mm. it took me about uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. The job was over. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Yes. The second main principle is crop rotation or intercropping. Never plant the same crop on the same patch of land year after year. Instead, rotate a legume with a cereal. So Isaac, yes. what do we have here? Initially, we had here maize and we have done crop rotation using the beans. Wow, so this is the other principle, yes. crop rotation. Yes. Crop rotation stops pests and diseases building up in the soil and also helps maintain nutrient balance. How long do you take to harvest these beans? It takes only eight to six days to be ready. Wow, Why eight to six days and you can eat the beans. Let's move on. The third main principle is residue cover or soil cover. That means keeping the unwanted remains of previous harvest on top of the soil. Isaac, yes. wow, this place looks so untidy. Can I start cleaning it up? No, we need not to clean up. Why? Why? Here we have a crop residue where we have covered our soil. Wow, so it's got use? Yes. And why did you do that? And this one controls soil erosion. After the composition, it forms a farmyard manure. In addition, it conserves moisture. Keeping crop residue is like putting a hat on your head when the sun is hot. The residue protects the soil from scorching, rots down to provide nutrients and help hold water moisture in the ground. Where do you get these residues? From the same lily field, from bananas, then from beans, from maize. So Isaac, yes. in conservation agriculture, nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. Wow. Now you've heard from the expert that come rain or oh, shine, we shall ship that chamber. Let's keep going. So that's it. Quite simple, really. Don't turn over the soil before planting. Instead, use a herbicide against weeds. Rotate crops across a season to reduce pests and diseases. And keep crop residue after harvesting to protect the soil and hold moisture. Let's see if Joseph is convinced. Joseph, yes. you've seen for yourself conservation agriculture. Exactly. What do you think? It is very good method of farming. <laughs> it is very easier compared with other methods of farming. And uh, let, let's look at uh, comparison in harvests. Is there any difference? Before CA, I, in a half an acre, I used to get seven, eight bags of maize. But now, with the CA, I'm getting 18, 20 bags in a half an acre. Are you happy with that? I'm very happy. So, we've learned a lot about tomatoes and the Rambo F1 variety. And, Rambo, what happened to you? Well, I got rained on. <laughs> <laughs> no harm done. Rambo! Rambo uh, is back. You mean your muscles didn't help you? Let's not talk about my muscles, Carol. <laughs> and we've learned about conservation agriculture. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, Tony. Sorry. <coughs> oh, anyway, but on this chamber, Joseph is a real expert. That's right. And so we asked him to share with us his top tip in farming. What I would like to tell my fellow farmers is to be hardworking and I would like to tell them 
to try to plant tomatoes, the profit margin compared with other crops is higher. And I can plant tomatoes for three times a year. And uh, for rotational purposes, it's also good. Horticulture is a way to go, Karo. So, coming up after the break, we'll find out the benefits of using a tractor and choosing the right fertilizer. Okay, let me go dry up. No, Tony, uh, no, 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 shoot. Go, uh, go, go, go. See you later. Hey, see you later. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. See you later. Joseph seemed very impressed with the conservation agriculture way of farming and is keen to try it on his own farm. But with 17 acres to prepare, does he really have to do away with using a tractor? To explain how tractors and conservation agriculture can work together, I've invited Simba Corp expert Timothy along. Practicing conservation agriculture with tractors is a secret the big industrial farms have known for years. It's all about choosing the right kind of plow. And to show how the plow impacts the soil, we've not got one, but two tractors. Both have Otma implements on the back, but one has a chisel plow and the other a disc plow. So we can compare them working side by side. Now, tell me, what have you brought for Joseph today? It's called a Tiger Same. Tiger Same 70. So I'm sure the tractor comes with plows. Yes. And Joseph here wants to start conservation agriculture. Yeah. Do you have plows that can make that applicable in Ishamba? People in Kenya or uh, locally, people have been using a disc plow. A disc plow is one that has been used for many years. A disc plow is used to turn around the soil, whereby actually just cut uh, through the soil, you turn the topsoil, goes down, and then you are left with the lower soil coming up. We are trying to come with another way of uh, plowing, which is now making assurance of uh, germination of your food. We're looking forward for something being called conservation agriculture. So, the first tractor is plowing in the traditional way using a disc plow. But when practicing conservation agriculture, it's recommended to use a chisel plow. Chisel plow will never turn the soil. It just goes down in the, in the farm and then just rips the ground open, yes. but never turns the soil upside down. But what are the advantages of using a chisel plow? When you're using a chisel plow, you're assured of germination because the water below the soil, it still remains there. Mm. So once you plant uh, your maize on that kind of a farm, prepare in that situation, okay. and the crop will come up. Sounds wonderful, but how can Joseph be sure the chisel plow is better than the disc plow? You'll be assured today, the two portions of land we've done for your farm today, there will be a difference in germination. Yes. If you have to plant tomorrow, yeah. that land that we've done with a, with a disc plow, okay. The germination will be slow. Yeah, okay. It'll be it will be having a weakling uh, a plant. Yeah, okay. But the one we have done with the chisel plow, you will come to tell me one day. Actually, the plant will come out strong. So there is a great ready difference. To grow. There is a great difference. Eh? Okay. One rain can actually take your crop quite far distance before another rain comes in. Okay. But the other one that you turn over with the disc, you will always be relying on rain almost every now and then. Okay. The soil becomes dry very fast. But today, mm -hmm. I've brought a new way of plowing, although it has been there with the big farmers, okay. but we're now trying to bring it to people like you, Joseph, and other farmers of your, of your class. Mm. Wow. Okay, wow. so Timo, you can advise me to use chisel. That plowing. is the way to go. Well, that sounds amazing. But will any tractor do? Same has a wide range of tractors, such as the Laser, the Explorer, the Fruteto, and the Tiger. Why does Timothy think the Same Tiger would be best for this farm? Actually, a Summer Tiger 875 horsepower. On full load, you can actually get about uh, eight liters per hour. So you can actually do one acre with only eight liters of fuel. Does it sound economical? It's, it's economical, actually. Yeah. And uh, are they avoidable? I just don't sell a tractor to you and then I abandon you. Okay. So I'll always be in contact with you. That is one part of the cheapness. Okay. Unlike others where you buy a tractor and then once you hit the door out of the, out of the showroom, okay. you never see the person again. So you have some kind of backup support? We have a fleet of service vehicles okay. that are all around in the country. It's only a phone call and I'm just a step away from you. Okay. So this, this mobile service, is, is it the ambulance vehicle that I saw? It is an economical to drive a tractor. 
to the workshop for service. But it's so speedy for me to use my ambulance, the service ambulance as we call it. So you go to the farm yourself? You go to the farm. With the doctor of the tractor? With the doctor of the tractor, well equipped uh, service my team we have. Mm -hmm. They understand the tractor. They just strip it down, they make it back within a splash of a, of a moment and then the tractor is back in the farm. What if you buy the Tiger 70? What, what use can you make of it? It is economical and it is multi-purpose tractor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be a it for income. You can use me in my farm and the other purposes. Okay, let's go have a look. Let's go have a look and see how it's working. Okay. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Our final expert today is Ignatius from Mavuno Fertilizers. Moses wants to follow his father and start farming following the principles of conservation agriculture. But how does Mavuno Fertilizer help? Moses used to use other fertilizers, but last season he switched to Mavuno. If you were to compare Mavuno with these other fertilizers that you've been using, mm -hmm. is there any difference? Yeah, there's a big difference mm -hmm. because when I was using the other fertilizers, I was getting 22 to 25 bags per acre. Okay. But when I used Mavuno, mm -hmm. I'm getting good results. 30, an average of 30 to 35 mm -hmm. bags per acre. Okay, how, yeah. how big is this chamber? This shanga is almost five acres. Five acres. Yeah. Ignatius, is that good yield? Yeah, that's good yield. Mm -hmm. And uh, the yields will keep on increasing uh -huh. while, while using Mavuno fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. Now what is Mavuno fertilizer? Uh, Mavuno fertilizer is a blend fertilizer mm -hmm. uh, made in Kenya. It has an NPK of 102610 plus 12 other essential elements. These include calcium, boron, sulfur, which are very mm -hmm. essential in uh, making the crop to grow faster and increasing the yield. Mavuno fertilizer is not just an ordinary fertilizer. It is a crop-specific fertilizer. Ignatius, when you talk about uh, crop-specific fertilizer, just expound on that. We all know that every crop has different uh, nutrition requirement, and that is what Mavuno fertilizer is made for. We have a fertilizer for maize, we have fertilizer for tomato, for example, we have fertilizer for banana, and these have been uh, made so that to meet the requirements of different crops. I've heard you talk about boron, you know I'm not so familiar with it. Yeah, these are uh, the secondary essential elements eh, that uh, when a crop is being planted year in, year out, they get lost in the soil. Mm -hmm. Now with Mavuno fertilizer, we have blended that and we have incorporated the 12 essential elements, that is the boron, sulfur, silicon, magnesium, mm -hmm. which fixes the NPK in this in this fertilizer, that is the 10, 26, 10. What, is, what is NPK? NPK is the primary uh, elements that make up a fertilizer. Okay. That uh, usually it is uh, essential in the growth of, the, of a crop. Traditional fertilizers feed only the plant and damage the soil. Mavuno fertilizers have added benefits of secondary nutrients and micronutrients, which are beneficial to the crop and the soil and guarantee a good yield. So in uh, Mavuno, these other 12 essential elements eh, has lime. And this lime enables the soil to obtain the required pH. Uh -huh. And you see in Kenya, mostly uh, our soils are more acidic. So having using Mavuno fertilizer, it actually brings back the soil to its normal in, tempo, in terms of nutrition value. How many bags am I supposed to use in one acre? And two, when am I supposed to apply the fertilizer? Mavuno fertilizer, in one acre, you just use 75 kilograms. That means eh, you have to buy one bag of 50 kg and another bag of 25 kg. Now, how do you apply this uh, fertilizer during planting? Mavuno fertilizer, there are two ways whereby you can apply. First, you realize most farmers usually have row planting and others have whole planting. Now, during row planting, you have to prepare the land, okay? Then during planting, you apply fertilizer in the rows. You just apply singly. But when you're using whole planting, you can use the, the top of a bottle, the, the bottle top. Just one bottle top per hole. That is the, the, the requirement of Mavuno fertilizer per acre. This is how many kilograms? This is a 50 kg kilogram. So what if I have maybe an eighth of an acre? Do I really need to buy this? And no, 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 you don't need to buy this. With Mavuno fertilizer, we have uh, considered all type of farmers, from the small scale to large scale. Mavuno fertilizers are available in five different pack sizes. One kilogram, 10 kilograms, 12 and a half kilograms, 25 kilograms, and 50 kilograms. 
and uh, the prices are they affordable to very the very much affordable very much available and we have considered even the small scale farm yes uh, where do farmers get mavuno i can advise farmers to go to any agrovet to go to any farmer's shop and request Mavuno fertilizer with our affordable prices. Anywhere, any place? Anywhere, any place in Kenya. Perfect. When you use Mavuno fertilizer, you not only have a well-balanced fertile soil, which leads to higher yield, and above all, it's quite affordable. So, Joseph and Moses, how did you find the shape up? On my side, I have learned a lot in order to improve my yields. Uh huh, of high quality? Yes. That is quite encouraging. Yeah. Nice. So, Joseph, we took you somewhere to go and visit another farmer. Yes. And you got rained on. Lane is a blessing. It is a blessing. Oh. Because without lane, yes. <laughs> no crops. Yes. Thank because you. Because I wanted to learn more. Uh, yeah. well, and I'm very happy today. And I know one person was really blessed by the rain. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So when you come back, I will see I have changed. Uh -huh. Huge changes. Huge changes. Uh -huh. So Rambo, oh sorry, Tony. I think our work here is... Uh, our work here is done and we'll see you in the next Shamba. Coopers are proud to partner with Shamba Shape Up. For over 100 years, Coopers have supported farmers with quality products for healthy livestock and increased production. Use CRV cement to improve your herd for greater returns. No one does it like them. They are legendary. <coughs> Thank you.